What's cracking? Big dogs. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the headquarters. My name is Nicholas and this is BDGE. Big dogs got to eat. And today, just like yesterday's video, yesterday's video, we went 16 rounds talking about the players that you should be targeting, the must draft players in every single round. We took two players, one running back, one wide receiver, and all 16 rounds that y'all got to be targeting in your fantasy football drafts. If you missed it, that means you're not subscribed. So make sure you scroll down, subscribe to the channel real quick, and go bite on the channel to watch yesterday's video, okay? We're following that up with 16 players, actually 32 players, 16 rounds, two players from every single round that you should be avoiding at all costs. This is basically the all quarantine team. You're not touching these dudes if you're double vaxxed up, double, triple cheeked up, vaxxed up, you got gloves on, you got masks on, you're in a fucking full suit. We're suited and zooted. We're not touching these dudes, all right? Don't fucking draft them. If I find out that any of you drafted any of these players, probably gonna win your championship, to be honest. But no, here's here's what we're doing. Here's what we're doing. 16 rounds, the all avoid team, the all fade list for 2021 fantasy football. One running back, one wide receiver from every round. If you want the entire list all broken down in depth, you can get you can get that at any time. BDGE.store has got the entire draft guide there set up for you. If you've done no research up to this point, it's got everything you possibly need for your drafts, okay? BDGE.store. Y'all know what to do next. Subscribe to the channel. Tuck your shirt in. Stop yelling and let's eat. <laughs> And just like yesterday, we're going to jump into the four for four ADP that is going to be linked in the description as well. It is completely free to use this data. And this is a compilation of all different platforms. You could see underdog, CBS, ESPN, FFPC, Best Ball 10s, NFL, Yahoo. So a mix of paid and a mix of free platforms. So I think it evens out the ADPs pretty significantly. All right, we're going to go round by round. And this time we're actually going to do round one because you do have to avoid players in round one. And I'm looking at round one and the easiest avoid for me is Saquon Barkley. And a lot of like friends and family leagues, people are still going to be taking him top five. Very nervous about the knee. He's not going to be 100% to start the year. He's going to get off to a slow start. And uh, and even if he is like 90%, the situation is objectively so bad in New York. Their offensive line is horrible. Kenny G banged up. The offense might just be terrible. The only team that scored fewer points per game than them last year were their New York brethrens, the New York Jets in gangrene. Okay. So Saquon seems like the easiest avoid for me. As I always say, don't find injuries in fantasy football because they're going to find you. And then at wide receiver, I mean, there's literally only two wide receivers going off the board. It's Devonte Adams and Tyree Kill, and I'm not about to go on record to tell you to avoid Devonte Adams. So actually, honestly, I'm not saying like Tyree Kill is an avoid. Like obviously, you'll be happy to have him on your team, but if I'm comparing him, I actually have him ranked as my wide receiver four. I have Stephon Diggs ahead of him, and I have Calvin Ridley ahead of him. So I guess in that sense, he is a fade for me for no real reason other than the volume is going to be. My, I, I think. Devontae Adams, Diggs, and Calvin Ridley all have the chance to see between 160 and 170 targets this year, which is unbelievable type of target volume. All three of them are deep threats. All three of them are red zone threats. Terry Kill, I don't know how involved he's going to be. Oh, I'm actually going to stop my statement right there. I, I'm, I'm not about to talk shit about Terry Kill for two minutes here, but if I have to fade one guy that's a wide receiver in round one, it's Terry Kill. It's not Devontae Adams. So let's move to round two. Round two, we are looking at picks 13 through 24. And for me, it's a little bit difficult for running backs because I, you know, there's stuff to like about every single one of them. JT up at 13 makes you a little bit nervous, but I'm pretty confident that Wentz and Quentin Nelson are both going to be back for the start of the season. So I'm fine with Jonathan Taylor in the second round. I'm going to be honest here. Mixon is probably the worst pick here. He has like the least upside compared to the rest of the guys in this group, in my opinion, but you're also getting him down at pick 22. And I don't really want to go on record either to say to fade Antonio Gibson. Here's what I'll say. I'm not going to fade any running back in particular in the second round. I think Antonio Gibson presents the highest risk. I think he probably has the highest upside of all of the running backs in this round. I think he presents the highest risk factor of all of them for two reasons. One, we know the turf toe thing is real. Can he play through it and play at like 98%? Absolutely. But there is the off chance that he re-aggravates the toe. It leads to lingering. It leads to surgery in season. That is very much a real possibility based on fucking science, based on doctors. And I'm only technically a doctor, but we know these things, okay? So Gibson presents a lot of risk. Also, he's not playing on any third downs. He's getting an unbelievable amount of touches on the first two downs that he's been playing in so far in the preseason with the starters, right? He's getting touches like at a 75% snap rate, which is crazy, crazy. But third downs, he's coming off the field 
every single time. It's J.D. McKissick on third downs every single time. That's going to cap him a little bit. So I think there's two risk factors when it comes to Gibson. Again, none of these guys are all out fades for me. I will diversify the revenue on these running backs. The wide receivers in this group are also really, really strong targets. No way I'm fading Diggs, Hopkins, Ridley. I will fade Hopkins at that ADP just based on the fact that I think the other guys are going to perform a lot better in that area. And Hopkins has added target competition there with Rondell Moore and A.J. Green. So I am a little bit more skeptical on DeAndre Hopkins giving you a ceiling like those other guys. But if there's one guy in this in this group that I'm probably going to fade right now, it's A.J. Brown. And that's based on the news of this new like knee injury. Uh, there was some reports that just came out that he's recovering from this knee surgery again, and he should be ready for week one, but that kind of raises a red flag to me. So AJ Brown's second round is something that I am going to be avoiding. If he falls into the third round, I'll start to consider him. But again, we don't like to draft injuries because we're going to we're gonna have plenty of injuries that happen to us throughout the season. So AJ Brown actually becomes probably the, the, the easiest fade for me here based on the reports of the knee injury. Round three, we had a report come out today. Man, all of them, you know what's fucked up? I did my whole draft guide, right? I wrote I wrote the all fade list. I wrote the the must draft list. I wrote our, our most underrated players and sleepers for the year. We have our rankings up. And then all of a sudden, you know, my entire all fade list, just terrible reports just start coming out about all the players on there. And I'm like, fuck, all y'all are getting free money because you're getting to avoid players that we were already going to, going to avoid based on those reports that are coming out now. DeAndre Swift, there's some really, really concerning reports that just came out today that their uh that their head coach um who the fuck is their head coach I can't think of his name like eating kneecaps and shit he came out and he's like yeah we think DeAndre Swift will be ready for week one we're not sure how involved he's gonna be he's not in good football shape just like really 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 negative energy towards DeAndre Swift and the way he said it makes me think of two things that he's still hurt right he's missed basically all of training camp with some lower uh some lower body injury and that's not the first time this has happened to Swift he's dealt with that all last summer he dealt with it going into the year as well um so he's he's racking up a bit of a, an injury resume there so the way that this is pissing me off who's their head coach Dan Campbell that's who it is the way that Dan Campbell came out and said like he might be available for week one if he is we don't know how much we're going to be able to use him that tells me one he's still hurt he's still less than 100 percent and out of shape right now so DeAndre Swift was already going to be in a timeshare with Jamal Williams this makes him an easy easy fade in round three for me uh DeAndre Swift is slowly slowly but surely moving to almost off my board type atmosphere there and at pick 36 Mike Evans is the easiest fade for me in the third round this Tampa Bay offense if I'm drafting a pass catcher it is going to be Antonio Brown Antonio Brown Antonio Brown uh, Mike Evans is very reliant on touchdowns and it could happen again but this is probably going to be a run first team honestly this is going to be a team that and eh, maybe not run first but they have an unbelievable defense they're going to rely on their defense they're not going to have high passing volume and they just have so many weapons there so to take Evans you know we saw this the the target splits right i talked about it in yesterday's video antonio brown versus mike evans versus godwin brown led the led them three in targets and receptions in the games that they played together so to draft mike evans 5 to 6 rounds ahead of antonio brown makes absolutely no sense where we don't know where the touchdown luck is going to go what if the touchdowns break even where Evans has eight Antonio Brown has eight Chris Godwin has nine or something like that that just makes Mike Evans a horrible pick in the third round so I will be fading Mike Evans in the third round just based on what they have going there in Tampa Bay and you're drafting him at his ceiling in my opinion when we move to round four the only two running backs in this area are actually Josh Jacobs is here too so Miles Sanders Josh Jacobs Chris Carson I like Carson I don't like either of the other two I think Sanders and Jacobs are both terrible picks in the fourth round we have Miles Sanders who is going to be in a committee they tried to give him the workhorse touches last year he ended up getting hurt and now they bring in Kenneth Gainwell carry on Johnson Jordan Howard one of them got cut again second video in a row I fucking did this and I can't remember who got cut they bring in they re-sign Jordan Howard bring in Kenneth Gainwell they still have Boston Scott it's going to be a committee their coaches are coming out and saying they're going to use a committee in the backfield each guy presents a different thing for each person we don't know he's been terrible in the passing situations they've already been talking about it this summer how he's been really bad at catching passes and training camp and preseason and I just don't know what role he has outside of an explosive first and second down guy and I don't want that in my fourth round pick Josh Jacobs Las Vegas got rid of their entire offensive line. They bring in Kenyon Drake. So if there was ever hope of him getting more pass, passing downs, it just went out the door. So Josh Jacobs, Miles Sanders, both easy fades in the fourth round. The wide receiver, I like all the wide receivers in this fourth round, which is why we fade those running backs. We take the wide receivers. But both tight ends are not appealing to me whatsoever. Kyle Pitts as a rookie 
I'm good there in the fourth round. Mark Andrews, he has crept up my board a little bit because both Hollywood Brown and Rashad Bateman are hurt and are probably going to miss time, if not be a, a less than 100% for first month of the season. So I will go Kyle Pitts as my easy fade in the fourth round. I don't want a rookie tight end. I will wait on Hawkinson a round or two later. I will wait on Robert Tunyon four rounds later. But Kyle Pitts, I am uh, I'm very much good with not drafting Kyle Pitts in the fourth round. Let's move down to round five. And this is another one. This, this one kind of killed me because I had been all fucking aboard the fade Travis Etienne redraft train. And then he has the midfoot sprain in last night's preseason game. People that were drafting Travis Etienne in the fourth round, it was the easiest tell that you had no idea what the fuck you're doing because he had been getting, he had been the third string running back on every snap and every preseason game so far. It's been James Robinson, James Robinson, James Robinson, Carlos Hyde, Travis Etienne. He is just a weapon. He's a guy that's going to catch some passes and now he's got the midfoot sprain. We don't know the severity of it, but that means it's a Liz Frank injury. And that means it could be very, very severe. That could be what Joe Mixon had last year that forced him out for the whole season. That could be surgery, which would basically force him out for the whole season. It could be a lot less severe than that. He could be back in the middle of September, but those things can linger. I mean, he's immediately uh, the backup, if not the RB3 in his backfield. So VTN still goes anywhere near the fifth round of your draft. Easiest fate I've ever seen. At the wide receiver position, we have two guys I don't like. I don't like Thielen or DJ Moore here. So with Thielen, he ranked basically at wide receiver 25 or worse last year. He finished as like the wide receiver nine in fantasy because he scored 14 touchdowns. But in terms of targets, receptions, receiving yards, he was outside of the top 24 in all three of those categories. And it's because Justin Jefferson is a clear alpha here. Thielen was getting by based on this touchdown volume, which you can't bank on that to repeat. So Thielen is a guy that, you know, you can draft him at wide receiver 20. He'll probably put up wide receiver 20 and 24 type numbers. You want guys with more upside here. If you're drafting in the fifth round, Draft guys like Deontay Johnson, who has a lot more upside, Brandon Ayuk, than, than Adam Thielen. So Adam Thielen is a guy who I want absolutely no part of. Let's move down to round six. Round six, uh, all the running backs here are pretty fucking ugly. Don't love Kareem Hunt. I don't really love Mike Davis. Uh, Javante Williams is a really easy fade for me here. Uh, you guys really, really like this non-tangible upside that that you keep saying he has. He's splitting carries with Royce Freeman in the preseason, and that's because Melvin Gordon is not even playing. When Melvin Gordon is back for Denver, he is the starter for the first half of the season. Yeah, Javante Williams might take over, you know, in weeks like nine or ten or something. It's going to be a back. It's going to be a running back by committee for the entire season. Uh, uh, depending on when Javante Williams takes over as a starter, that's when his value kicks in. But I'm not drafting a guy who we might see become the starter over the second half of the year in the sixth round. It just doesn't make any sense to me. I would rather have one of the wide receivers, T. Higgins, Chase Claypool, Chase Edmonds at this point in the sixth round. So when I'm looking at the wide receivers here, I'm fading Odell Beckham absolutely and unapologetically been on record a million times. Y'all just keep trying to chase this prime that's not there. The Browns are not a pass first offense. In the 16 games that he actually was on the field for with Baker Mayfield and the Browns, Jarvis Landry out-targeted him, out-reception, out-yardage, like out-everything to him. And Odell Beckham is coming off an ACL tear. He's 29 years old. He's had so many significant injuries on his resume. Uh, Odell Beckham easily, easily, easily off my board at a fifth to sixth round price. Uh, please do please, please, please do not draft him talking about how he has a ceiling that he once hit like five years ago. People just throw the, the word ceiling and upside around with no fucking regards to, to the to the English language. It's truly a fucking masterpiece by you guys. Some Shakespearean shit when it comes to Odell. Let's move to round seven. Let's move to round seven. Seven heaven. Uh, Well, the running back we are fading here is without a doubt Raheem Mostert. Raheem Mostert is 185 to 190 pounds. He has played in more than nine games one time. They traded up to draft Trey Sermon in the third round. Uh, Raheem Mostert does not get goal line carries, and he does not catch passes. He is a phenomenally exciting running back, explosive, and can rip off games of 10 for 90 and two touchdowns. But to bank on that is something that I want absolutely no part of. So we are fading Raheem Mostert. We're also fading, I mean, the obvious one is Michael Thomas. If he's still going in the seventh round of your drafts, him, the same thing with like Travis Etienne, like you just don't want to deal with this injury. I'm telling you, you don't want to draft injuries. He's going to miss, he's going to get on, he's going to be on the pup list. He's going to miss the first half of the season. He's going to come back, play 40%, 50%, 60% of the snaps. He's going to be out for 11 to 12 games by the time you actually get to use him. If that, if he even comes back at all this fucking year, please don't draft Michael Thomas unless he falls into like the 14th round. Michael Thomas, definitely out. Uh, same thing with Juju. Juju is not going to be playing in two wide receiver sets. Juju is going to be off the field when they are running 12 personnel. And they're going to do that a lot because Pat Fryermouth looks like a beast and him and Ebron are going to be on the field together. It's going to be Chase Claypool and it's going to be Deontay Johnson on the outside. Juju's going to be sucking on the short end of the stick there. Um, you do not want to be drafting Juju Smith-Schuster in the seventh round. Just trust, just trust a motherfucker on that. Round eight. Round eight will go to 
Mr. Michael Carter at the 806. Easy fade here for me. He has been playing just like Travis Etienne. You all want to hype up these rookie running backs that are not going into clear-cut workhorse situations. Carter was a fourth-round pick. Carter is the third-string running back right now. Everything about the preseason says that thus far. Ty Johnson is playing ahead of him, who I actually like as a sleeper in the later rounds. Tevin Coleman is playing ahead of him. And uh, don't sleep on don't sleep on those two running backs, man. But this is going to be a committee. Michael Carter is not playing in the pass-catching role. He's not playing on third downs uh, with the starters so far. Zach Wilson has played a significant amount of snaps, so we're starting to get a clear picture of what the backfield is, and it is a very... Very, very messy committee in which Michael Carter is not taking any of the valuable work. So we're off of Michael Carter. I actually really like the wide receivers in this round. I guess if I had to fade one, it would be Brandon Cooks just based on the fact that Tyrod Taylor is just not going to be a serviceable fantasy quarterback. So I don't know. Say what you want about Brandon Cooks, but like, listen, he played with Deshaun Watson. He's played with Tom Brady. He's played with Drew Brees. Uh, he, he's not going to be able to do that with Tyrod Taylor. So I've, I've found myself taking, I don't, I don't dislike Brandon Cooks, but I found myself taking zero, zero, zero exposure to the man Brandon Cooks. If we move on to round nine, we are looking at uh, a gross, a gross round of running backs. I want no part of Ronald Jones. That's going to be a committee. Uh, where Gio Bernard takes almost all of the passing down work. Ronald Jones and Leonard Fournette are going to be splitting early down work. So my view has shifted dramatically on this backfield based on the fact that Gio is still there and Gio is playing on all the third downs with Tom Brady. So no Ronald Jones there. You obviously just don't want to take James Conner because he's fucking old and brittle and he's going to shatter at any minute. At wide receiver, I like Jarvis Landry. I like most of the wide receivers in this round. I do not like Curtis Samuel. Curtis Samuel's missed like the entire offseason. It's a new quarterback. Terry McLaurin is a clear alpha there. Curtis Samuel was good last year in fantasy because they used him the way that he should be used. Curtis Samuel should be used as a hybrid player. And I'm not sure why we assume that he's going to be used the right way this year because he's going back to a coach in Ron Rivera, who was the reason that he wasn't good to begin with, who was the reason that he wasn't being used the correct way. We already have a sample size with Ron Rivera using Curtis Samuel, and it was not the right way. So uh, Logan Thomas, Gibson, McKissick, McLaurin, just too many, just too many good fingertips receiving passes in that offense there. So I'm not I'm not grabbing anything with Curtis Samuel because he's just missed the entire offseason as well. Move down to round 10, double digits. Uh, yeah, I'm just not drafting Kenyon Drake. It's just not an offensive ground game that I want a part of, and Drake is not going to get a ton of, I don't know. It's just it's just an uninspiring pick. Well, nothing to do with Kenyon Drake. Obviously, David Johnson becomes a really ugly pick in the 10th round as well because he's not getting any of the early down work. He's only playing on third down snaps with the starters in Houston there, and he's just also on Houston. So uh, Marquise Brown would be my easy wide receiver fade here at pick 112 at the 1004. Marquise Brown, he, he's going off the board as a wide receiver 46. He literally finished as the wide receiver 44 in points per game last year, and he's already dealing with a significant hamstring injury that's made him miss the entire preseason, as well as Rashad Bateman coming in, who's going to miss probably the first month of the season. But Rashad Bateman, once he gets on the field, is going to command alpha targets there on the outside, at least. So I want nothing to do with Marquise Brown this year. Move down to round 11. And uh, we like Jamal Williams now that DeAndre Swift is up in the air. We like Devin Singletary. Wait, I mean, Devin Singletary is an easy fade. I want nothing to do with Singletary this year, but I still take him over Naeem Hines. Naeem Hines down at the 11-11. I mean, like, Hines is just the worst season-long redraft pick. You want to take him in best ball, fine, but, like, good luck trying to fucking figure out when you could dis- when you can actually start a guy like Naeem Hines because he'll give you point fucking four points one game and then 9.4 points the next game, and then you'll be like, oh, I should start him. And then he goes for two points and then you have to sit him and then he goes for 20. Just just, just stay away from that headache in season long leagues. There's no reason to draft a guy like Naeem Hines at the wide receiver position. I started the summer a little bit okay with drafting Henry Ruggs. I was like, you know what? Down rookie year, whatever. Maybe he bounces back a little bit. But literally every piece of preseason hype out of the wide receiver group there has been for Mr. Brian Edwards. So if you're drafting a Las Vegas receiver in the double digit rounds, it is Brian Edwards. It is not Henry Ruggs. We moved to round 12. Uh, listen, guys. I know I said I was going to do one for every round and I was going to talk about the fades down here, but you guys are, you're already fading them. Like the reason these guys are 12, 13, 14, 15th round pick is because you're literally fucking fading them already. Okay. So there's nothing I could really tell you down at this point in the draft, like round 12. Yeah. All of the running backs here are fucking fades. The only two going in round 12 are, let's see. Philip Lindsay and Latavius Murray. Uh, Lindsay is a fade for sure. He's going to get some early down work, but he's probably going to split it with Mark Ingram, who might get goal line carries. He's going to split third down work with David Johnson. So you don't want Philip Lindsay. Wide receiver wise, you don't want to draft T.Y. Hilton. Uh, he is a shell of himself based on Matt Harmon's reception perception. He was in like the bottom fifth percentile in separating versus man coverage and press coverage. If you're going to go with a wide receiver in Indy, 
take Michael Pittman. I'd even take probably Paris Campbell over T.Y. Hilton at this point. So fade T.Y. Hilton. Fade fucking everybody at this point in the draft. Fade Adam Troutman. Now he's hurt. He was on my all-fade list, so I don't even get to cheer about that. James White, he's like Naeem Hines, but slow. Never know when to start him, so absolutely do not be drafting James White's. Who else down here? Yeah, that'll probably wrap up the video. Do not draft James Jamison Crowder either. He's like the wide receiver four there in New York. So I know I lied to you guys, as I always do. I actually, you know what? Fuck you. I didn't lie because I said I was going to give you 16 players to avoid. And I ended up doing 12 rounds times two. The mathematics add up. Shout out to TI-84 as always. You will be sick if we got Texas Instruments TI to fucking sponsor our videos. I would hate that. I wouldn't even know how to plug it. I'd be like, buy a fucking calculator. And no, not a single person would buy a calculator based on my ad read. But it'd be a sick sponsor. It'd be a sick sponsor. But based on math, based on the math, I actually gave you like 25 players. So you can't say I lied to you. I just didn't go through every round. You know, I just didn't go through every fucking round. But anyways, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Again, you can cop the draft guide, which has all of this like neatly organized, all of the best information that we put out throughout the summer on BDGE dot store the rankings the must draft the all fade the sleepers the undervalued the underrated under everything okay how to get under zendaya all that good shit all listed in there uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're new obviously we're doing videos like this every single day leading up to your fantasy football drafts as well as in season we'll have content leading you to your chips hopefully bringing home the hardware tomorrow starts the bdge nyc draft weekend let's fucking go i'm gonna be blitzed out of my mind for the next 48 to 72 hours we'll be doing live streams we'll get tons of vlog content footage out there if y'all are in new york we're throwing a fucking party friday night everybody's invited except for all y'all crazy motherfuckers out there so no one's really invited but i still love you so hit the thumbs up if you enjoyed the video shout out to fucking me let's go now shout out to y'all i appreciate all the support this summer and let's keep cruising let's keep cruising we're about to hit 60k subs i want 70 i want 70 by kickoff let's go